התקופה של יום הגירוי זה הייתה לי התקופה הכי קשה שהייתה לי בחיים. אחרי יום הרעתי את אימא שלי, אחר כך גם בוכה עצובה. היו פעמים שהיא אמרה, אמרה לי, אם אתה מקבל את הצו גירוש, אני ישר חוזר אותך עם כל האחים. אני לא משאיר אותך פה לבד. זה דבר קשה לפעול, זה בן אדם אחרי גיל 18, ישר, לא חי עדיין את החיים, לשלוח אותו למקום שהוא לא מכיר. דרך העבודה שלי נחשפתי לסיפורים שלהם, וכך החלטתי להתנדב עם אדון הנוער של הסף, ואני עושה את זה כבר שבע שנים. שיש להם עתיד לא ברור, עתיד לא ברור אה, מבחינת אה, איפה הם יהיו, אם אה, יכולים ללכת ללמוד באוניברסיטה. מה, אם הם יחזרו למקום אה, לדרום סודאן או ל, ל, לכל אה, אריתריאה או כל מקום אחר. זה, הם, הם חיו בפחד. הפחד שלהם היה הפחד שלי, שהם יגורשו מפה, וזה באמת... אה, הרג אותי. עדיין, לא צריך לוותר, אי אפשר לדעת מתי זה עוד פעם יקרה. كنت أشتغل سائق تاكسي من برطة على الجنين خمس سنين نفس اليوم اللي صار معي في الحادي الصبح كان الوضع عادي جدا أخرحت أخذ ركاب أو مواطنين نقلتهم من برطة على الجنين ومن جنين لبرطة اتفاجأت في وجود مستوطنين بجانب مستوطن الدوتان مسكرين نشبه لما وصلت وكان المحصوم مسكر وقفت أجا مستوطن حكى لي أرجع منهم قلت له هاي الطريق الوحيدة اللي بتأدي لبيتي وما فيش طريق ثاني بعدها حاول يبهدلني في الكلام أنا ما سمعت منه ضليت في مكاني راح جاب معاه كمان مستوطن تاني أجا بحكي مين اللي بدوش يرجع وحكيت له أنا كان بلش يضرب فيه مباشرة بدون أي كلام What we try to do is to hold the Israeli authorities accountable for Israeli actions in the West Bank. This place that I was trying to get from the police. والمكان هذا معلم بنفسي في طول الوقت. كان كل ما أمرق عنه بشو بتذكر الموقف. بعدين اضطريت اني لما صاروا يضربوا في استنجد في الجنود اللي كانوا موجودين بالقرب من المكان بس ما كان في اي فائده منهم لما ضربوني حسيت في الاهانه وانه انا ما يعني ما بملك حقي حتى في العوده لبيتي I think the feeling of Palestinians being exposed to violence to uh, damage to property is something that Israelis just don't want to know and if you want to call yourself a democracy you cannot do that מעצבן אותי שאומרים שאין גזענות. במיוחד במצב של היום, זה מתסכל. כי אנחנו חווים את זה. כל מיני מקומות עבודה, זה קורה בבית ספר, זה קורה בגנים, זה... אתה לא יכול להתווכח עם בן אדם שחי את זה וחווה את זה מגיל קטן. אני כרגע עובדת בבית חולים כאחות. באתי למשמרת ערב, הייתי מופקדת על כמה חדרים, ובאחד החדרים התקבל מטופל 
כשהייתי צריכה לזרוק את המזרק עם אחת, הייתי צריכה לזרוק אותו לפח שהוא מיועד לחפצים חדים. והבת שלו ישבה עם הכורסה בדיוק בפינה שהפח היה נמצא שם. אז ביקשתי ממנה שאם היא יכולה לזוז עם הכורסה, זה יעזור לי מאוד. ואז שמעתי אותה אומרת, אתיופית מצריכה, תחזרי לאתיופיה. עמדנו מאחת מול השנייה, אז היא פשוט סתרה לי. לא כאבה לי הסתירה, יותר היה קשה לי איך שאני הרגשתי. כאב לי להבין שיש את הדבר הזה ועוד במקום כאילו ציבורי. העבודה הזאת היא באמת מספקת. אני מאוד אוהבת את העבודה שלי. אני מטפלת בחולים וזה גם ממלא אותי. אבל לבוא לתת מעצמך ושיגידו לך דברים כאלה במקום עבודה זה... חשתי השפלה מוחלטת. אני אגיד לך את האמת, אני מיואשת מהמדינה הזאת. I wish all Ethiopian Israelis were feeling that they are part of the Israeli society. At the end of the day, when they go and experience these, you know, racist or discriminatory acts in their daily lives, they slowly start to feel that they are not welcomed, they are not accepted. We are teaching the Ethiopian Israelis. This is their country. This is a democratic country, they have rights. שיפסיקו עם המקרי הגזענות האלה. שיפסיקו להתייחס אלינו כאל שונים. לילד מותר לשבת בספסל בשכונה שלו בלי לפחד שאיזה שוטר יעבור. שהבת שלי יכולה ללמוד בכל מסגרת שהיא יכולה. לא שלא מקבלים אתיופים, כי ישר פוסטים אותם ולא מסתכלים על ה... הישגים שלה או על מי שהיא. צריך לקבל כל בן אדם באשר הוא. לא משנה מאיפה הוא הגיע או מה הצבע העור שלו. התקופה של יום הגירוש זה הייתה התקופה הכי קשה שהייתה לי בחיים. אחרי נורא הייתי את אימא שלי, אחר כך גם בוכה עצובה. היו פעמים שהיא אמרה, אמרה לי, אם אתה מקבל את הצו גירוש, אני ישר חוזר אותך עם כל האחים. אני לא משאיר אותך פה לבד. זה דבר קשה לצפות את זה, בן אדם אחרי גיל 18, ישר, לא חי עדיין את החיים. לשלוח אותו למקום שהוא לא מכיר. דרך העבודה שלי נחשפתי לסיפורים שלהם, וכך החלטתי להתנדב עם מועדון הנוער של אסף, ואני עושה את זה כבר שבע שנים. שיש להם עתיד לא ברור. עתיד לא ברור אה, מבחינת אה, איפה הם יהיו, אם אה, יכולים ללכת ללמוד באוניברסיטה, מה, אם הם יחזרו למקום אה, לדרום סודאן, או ל, ל, לכל אריתריאה, אה, או כל מקום אחר. זה, הם, הם חיו בפחד. הפחד שלהם היה הפחד שלי, שהם יגורשו מפה, וזה באמת הרג אותי. עדיין לא צריך לוותר, כי אי אפשר לדעת מתי זה עוד פעם יקרה.
أشتغل سائق تاكسي من بارطة على جنين خمس سنين نفس اليوم اللي صار معي فيه الحادث الصبح كان الوضع عادي جدا رحت أخذت ركاب أو مواطنين نقلتهم من بارطة على جنين ومن جنين لبارطة تفاجأت في وجود مستوطنين بجانب مستوطن الدوتان مسكرينش لما وصلت وكان المحسوم مسكر وقفت أجا مستوطن حكى لي ارجع من هون قلت له هاي الطريق الوحيدة اللي بتأدي لبيتي وما فيش طريق ثاني بعدها حاول يبهدلني في الكلام أنا ما سمعت منه ضليت مكاني راح جاب معاه كمان مستوطن ثاني أجا بحكي مين اللي بدوش يرجع وحكيت له أنا كان بلش يضرب فيه مباشرة بدون أي كلام What we try to do is to hold the Israeli authorities accountable for Israeli actions in the West Bank. <laughs> هذا المكان اللي انا تعرضت فيه للضرب من ضمن من قبل المستوطنين والمكان هذا معلم بنفسي في طول الوقت كان كل ما امرق عنه بشو بتذكر الموقف بعدين اضطريت اني لما صارت في استنجد في الجنود اللي كانوا موجودين بالقرب من المكان بس ما كان في اي فائده منهم لما ضربوني حسيت في الإهاني وإنه أنا ما يعني ما بملك حقي حتى في العودة لبيتي. I think the feeling of Palestinians being exposed to violence, to uh, damage to property, is something that Israelis just don't want to know. And if you want to call yourself a democracy, you cannot do that. بين אותי שאומרים שאין גזענות. במיוחד במצב של היום, זה מתסכל. כי אנחנו חווים את זה. קורה במקומות עבודה, זה קורה בבית ספר, זה קורה בגנים, זה... אתה לא יכול להתווכח עם בן אדם שחי את זה וחווה את זה מגיל קטן. אני כרגע עובדת בבית חולים כאחות. באתי למשמרת ערב, הייתי מופקדת על כמה חדרים, ובאחד החדרים התקבל מטופל. כשהייתי צריכה לזרוק את המזרקים אחת, הייתי צריכה לזרוק אותו לפח שהוא מיועד לחפצים חדים. והבת שלו ישבה עם הכורסה בדיוק בפינה שהפח היה נמצא שם. אז ביקשתי ממנה שאם היא יכולה לזוז עם הכורסה, זה יעזור לי מאוד. ואז שמעתי אותה אומרת, אתיופית מסריחה, תחזרי לאתיופיה. עמדנו אחת מול השנייה, ופשוט סתרה לי. לא כאבה לי הסתירה, יותר היה קשה לי איך שאני הרגשתי. כאב לي להבין שיש את הדבר הזה ועוד במקום כאילו ציבורי. העבודה הזאת היא באמת מספקת. אני מאוד אוהבת את העבודה שלי. אני מטפלת בחולים וזה גם ממלא אותי. אבל לבוא לתת מעצמך ושיגידו לך דברים כאלה במקום עבודה זה... חשתי השפלה מוחלטת. אני אגיד לך את האמת, אני מיואשת מהמדינה הזאתי. I wish... All Ethiopian Israelis were feeling that they are part of the Israeli society. At the end of the day, when they go and experience these, you know, racist or discriminatory acts in their daily lives, they slowly start to feel that they are not welcomed, they are not accepted. We are teaching the Ethiopian Israelis. This is their country. This is a democratic country. They have rights. שיעסיקו עם המקרה הגזענות האלה. שיעסיקו להתייחס אלינו כאל שונים. לילד מותר לשבת בספסל בשכונה שלו בלי לפחד שאיזה שוטר יעבור. שהבת שלי יכולה ללמוד בכל מסגרת שהיא יכולה. לא שלא מקבלים אתיופים, כי ישר פוסטים אותם ולא מסתכלים על ה... הישגים שלה או על מישהי. צריך לקבל כל בן אדם באשר הוא. 
לא משנה מאיפה הוא הגיע או מה הצבע העור שלו. Hello and welcome to New Israel Fund's annual Human Rights Awards Dinner. I'm your host for the evening, Jonathan Friedland. And if it is a Sunday evening in November, it means we are all going to be together yet again. Hundreds of you are watching, which means we've already tripled the audience for GB News. So that is a definite good start. And it's big progress since last year when I came to all of you. You might remember me sad and lonely in my attic room, Johnny No Mates. And now, just look at the, the difference. Just look over my shoulder behind me. And you can see that I have paid a group of actors to sit behind me pretending to be my friends. This represents great progress. It is a kind of hybrid we're doing this evening. It means some of you will be watching in the comfort of your home, and some of you will have, like these people, blagged your way into someone else's house to eat their food and drink their wine. Uh, and join us that way. And all of you are extremely welcome because the focus this evening is very much on you as the supporters of the New Israel Fund in its extraordinary work to make Israel a more fair and more just place. Um, I'm going to be uh, leading us through the proceedings this evening. And it is an important evening because it is the 25th anniversary of the New Israel Fund in the UK. I haven't been doing the awards dinners for every one of those 25 years, although it may feel like that a little bit uh, to all of you. But it is a very, very great pleasure. And tonight is going to be absolutely special because we are honouring uh, both an organisation and an individual who really do incarnate the uh, phenomenal work that New Israel Fund does. One of those, uh, the organisation is Shatil, the individual is the activist Avi Dabush. You're going to be hearing all about uh, both of them as the evening goes on. Uh, we're going to have the new Israel Fund's trademark uh, stirring films about those groups. We're going to have live music, which is wonderful, and we'll be joined live by our winners. So all of that is ahead, and uh, hopefully you've got some delicious food and drink coming as well, depending, of course, on your friends and where you've chosen, because it may have gone very badly wrong. Um, I don't obviously know that. Now, the main purpose of the evening, of course, to cut to the chase, is to raise money for the New Israel Fund so it can do its work uh, making Israel better uh, and fairer. And the process for that involves the QR code, which I hope you can see on the corner of your screen. Uh, it is some really uh, state-of-the-art technology involved. I'm sure Israeli high tech has got in there somewhere. Uh, our target this evening is half a million pounds. Just think of it as one billable hour for Jeffrey Cox. I think if you think of it that way, you'll realize that it is very achievable. That is what we are after tonight. So what you need to do is hold up your phone uh, to that um, QR code. And then as if by magic, it will lead you to the New Israel Fund's special tailor-made high-tech platform. Uh, and it will take you through all the steps you need essentially to uh, uh, give uh, your money to the New Israel Fund and to the kind of work you're going to see highlighted tonight. Um, we obviously want to hit a big target this year because what a year it has been since we last gathered, not only in terms of getting me out of the loft and down here into the main ground floor of the house. That feels, as I said, like progress. But a big year for the issues we all care about. And um, in terms of Israel, I think what's been really striking about the year that's passed is that the world has looked to Israel in three different ways. And I think it's fair to say one of them not good and two of them rather hopeful. And uh, one bad way, two good ways in which Israel has been the center of the world's gaze this last year. And I, you probably don't need me to tell you about the negative one that happened in the last 12 months. And that is, of course, the 11 day war over Gaza in the spring of this year for nearly 5000 rockets, more than 260 people killed, most of them, as you know, Palestinians. And the bloodshed that was uh, unleashed by that and the hate spread 
inside Israel, so that Jews and Arabs were uh, quite literally fighting each other on the streets, killing each other on the streets. And it highlighted actually in a really dramatic way the kind of challenge that so many of the groups that receive funds from the New Israel Fund and from people like you who give, uh, ha highlighted how important that work is because coexistence uh, in Israel between Jews and Arabs is such a live issue and we saw that played out in a really vivid and often quite lurid way this year. So that obviously has been one of the tough parts of the past year. But I did mention two positives and the first one is uh, perhaps unexpected to put it in this category but Israel emerged as a kind of leader on COVID and the pandemic and I had the privilege of speaking a few weeks ago with the doctor who is essentially Israel's Anthony Fauci. She is leading Israel's COVID response, a phenomenal woman. And she uh, said that how incredibly stressful it was for her because she feels that Israel is essentially going it alone. Israel has gone first in all the different stages of this process. Uh, firstly, in rolling out the vaccine. It was doing it first when no one else had yet done it. Uh, and then again with the program of booster shots. And I said to her, you know, are you just working around the clock? You know, what, how are you sleeping at night? And she said, there are no nights. Uh, she is just working day and night. And one of the big sources of anxiety, she said, was the fact that she's trying things that she knows no one else in the world has done. So Israel has suddenly become a place that people are talking about, not for the conflict, but for its progress uh, in dealing with this huge challenge. So that's one. And the other one, again, not an area where you would normally think would be hopeful, uh, but is in the area of politics. And that is Israel had a change of government this time. For the first time, it felt like, some, more or less since my bar mitzvah, um, Benjamin Netanyahu was not the prime minister suddenly. There was a change in government. Many people have wondered if that would ever happen again in Israel. And the reason why that's a positive and the reason why it's been gone around the world, I would say, is that the coalition that is ruling, nobody gave it any kind of chance and thought it had any prospects, but it's tremendously diverse. And there are parties of the right, most certainly, parties of Israeli nationalism, including the Prime Minister's party. But there are also parties of the left, of civil rights uh, and equality, and Israel's first Israeli Arab party. Again, super conservative party, Islamist party. It might not be a natural fit for many of the people watching uh, this event tonight. But the message of the government has been there is essentially, in the words of Joe Cox in this country, there is more in common than divides us. And that has been the kind of animating theme. And it's been really interesting to see Israel's prime minister, new prime minister, Naftali Bennett, go around the world making that point, saying, essentially, if we can do this, there's no reason why you in all these different countries of the world can't unite. So one negative, but two big positives, I think, have come out uh, of this year in terms of the way Israel is seen and Israel's supporters look at Israel around the world. So some grounds for optimism there, some grounds for feeling a bit better about the future, which leads me naturally, if we're talking about hope for the future and the uh, what comes uh, and, uh, uh, and the potential that lies ahead, what better moment to introduce the new chief executive officer of the new Israel Fund, uh, because there's been change there. It's not just uh, the, at the Israeli government. And so a word from the new CEO of the New Israel Fund, David Davidi Brown. Welcome to the New Israel Fund UK's 2021 Human Rights Awards Dinner. We're delighted to be bringing together hundreds of people, whether online or in person, to celebrate those advancing equality and justice in Israel. As this is my first HRAD in this role, I wanted to take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself in the hope that my story, a short story I do promise, resonates with each one of you. In many ways, I'm a typical British Jew. I went to a Jewish secondary school and discovered Israel for the first time on a trip as a teenager. In some other ways, I'm a little less typical. My mum moved to this country as a very young child as an immigrant from India, and her family are from India, Iraq and Iran. Four years ago, as part of a joyful ceremony, I married my husband under a chuppah. And in both our families, there are people from many different faiths and backgrounds, including Jews and Israelis who haven't always been treated well by the Israeli government. Being proudly Jewish, deeply connected to Israel, and concerned for Israeli society have been big parts of my life. And I'm so proud that those parts of my life come together in working for NIF and with all of you. Having experienced homophobia and racism, 
including sadly from within the Jewish community, I am particularly grateful and proud to be working for an organisation where I can truly and fully be myself. And yet for all our differences, our community has a lot of common ground. I believe that those already within the NIF community share a vision with the vast majority of British Jews. A vision of an Israel that is secure, democratic, just and equal. I'm just starting out in this role and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the person who dedicated 10 years of thoughtful and talented leadership to NIF UK before I started. Adam Ognall is an inspiration. He truly embodied the values of NIF and cherished every supporter, colleague and partner that he worked with. Under his compelling leadership, NIF UK reached thousands of people and raised almost £20 million for those advancing human rights. Carrying on Adam's leadership and building on the good work of all of those that built NIF UK over the last 25 years means we continue our struggle for justice. For many people over many years, supporting Israel was about solidifying defences or raising buildings. Today, it's about defending democracy and building a fair, just and equal Israeli society where everyone who lives there can feel truly included. Each one of you is part of our NIF UK community and I'm really grateful for your ongoing commitment and continued generosity. Tonight, I hope you will renew that generosity and support through inspiring leaders like Avi Dabush and phenomenal partners like Shatil. It is your generosity that makes their impact possible. 2021 has been a year of crisis and opportunity in Israel, and only with your renewed support can NIF, Shatil and our grantees repair the wounds in Israeli society and make sure that there's long-lasting change so that there's a fairer society for all Israelis. I really hope you enjoy being with us this evening, whether you're joining online or in person. I hope you are moved by everything you hear tonight to really support us and support people like Avi and Shatil. And I look forward to meeting many more of you in the months ahead. Well, some inspiring words from the new chief executive of the New Israel Fund, David Davidi Brown. And he's obviously already uh, done some inspirational work because I can reveal that in just the last few minutes, New Israel Fund uh, fundraising total has reached six figures and it stands at £100,000, which is a huge achievement already. In Jeffrey Cox's terms, that's already about six minutes of work. So that is extraordinary. Um, we've done extremely well. Um, to our first winner then, but keep coming, keep coming with, the, with the donations. You can do that via the QR code on your screen. Remember, you just hold up your phone and it does the rest through various magical things and takes you to uh, the fundraising platform. You log in there, incidentally use the details you use to book your place for this evening. That will be the uh, those will be the details that the platform will recognize. Make your donation there. But to our first winner for the evening, uh, and that is Shatil, a transformational organization that works hand in hand with the New Israel Fund uh, to ensure that the New Israel Fund is so much more than just a you know, giver out of funds, but is instead uh, really involved uh, with the work itself. It trains and provides advice to hundreds of civil society organizations. Uh, and Shatil does that in order to ensure they get, in effect, maximum bang for your buck to make sure they are supremely effective in what they do. It builds and connects networks of leaders so that groups work together uh, to lobby for change in the areas that they target, particularly healthcare, uh, housing, and equal opportunity. You're gonna see some figures at the end of the film we're gonna show you now which show you just the impact they're having actually concretely, and I mean concretely, in terms of 72,000 houses built and in terms of dollars and cents budgets that are going particularly to the most economically vulnerable citizens of Israel, and that very off, uh, often includes or uh, really uh, targets uh, Israel's Arab communities. So we're going to show you a 10-minute film now that particularly focuses on the story of how Shatil changed the landscape 
for the Bedouin community in the Negev. And it really makes very, very tangible what Shatil does and how it changes lives. I think it's a, a bit of an eye opener. We'll be back with you in 10 minutes after this film. Shatil is part of NIF. Shatil is actually the action arm of NIF in the field. It's a home for the different players and actors that work in civil society. We train and provide tailor-made consulting for different civil society groups and for leaders and have them become more professional and influential in their work. בדואים בעצם חיו במרחב הנגב עוד לפני קום המדינה. זה בדואים שהיו בתהליך של אורבניזציה, של מעבר מחיי נוודות לחיי קבע. חיו על חקלאות. האוהלים או המאהלים הפכו להיות סוג של כפרים. ולכן המדינה ראתה איום בזה שבעצם הבדואים עכשיו הופכים להיות אה, תושבי קבע. והם בעצם אה, השתלטו על הקרקע. ולכן צריך להיכנס אותם לתוך... יישובים, החזון היה כמה שיותר ערבים בדואים, כמה שפחות שטח. לאורך בערך שנות ה-70, שנות ה-80 ושנות ה-90, זו הייתה המדיניות. יש שבעה יישובים, צריך לרכז את כל הבדואים בשבעת היישובים האלה. היישובים שהמדינה הקימה עדיין לא הוכיחו את עצמם כיישובים אטרקטיביים שיכולים למשוך את הבדואים לתוכם ויכולים לשפר את חייהם. מי שלא בא ליישובים האלה שהמדינה בעצם תכננה, זה מה שאנחנו קוראים לזה תושבי הכפרים הבלתי מוכרים. מבחינת המפות של המדינה, הם לא קיימים שם, הם שקופים, ולכן התושבים האלה לא מקבלים שום שירותים מהמדינה. לא מים, לא חשמל, לא כבישים, לא חינוך, לא בריאות, לא תחבורה, ולכן המאבק כדי שהמדינה, קודם כול, תראה את האנשים האלה שחיים בה, ביישובים האלה. כי הם אזרחי מדינת ישראל, הם עושים את, את החובות שלהם כלפי המדינה, ומצד שני הם צריכים לקבל שירותים כמו שאר האזרחים במדינה. כפר לא מוכר, אין לו תשתית. כפר לא מוכר, אסור לבנות בו. כפר לא מוכר, אין לו כמעט שום דבר. אתה מגדל ילד בלי גן. אנחנו ממש נאבקים על החיים שלנו, ממש נאבקים על החיים שלנו. אנחנו לא אויבים של אף אחד, אבל אנחנו אזרחי המדינה. היום כן בין ארבע ותמנים. אני כנת דלת ישראל עם חשה. אני כנת מוג'וד, גבל את חשה אני כנת מוג'וד. אנחנו כנת, אנחנו עבדו רוחב. נוב בן גוטרף על מג'רה הדה, נוב בן גוטרף על מג'רה הדה. ולא בן גוטר في مجرى ديمونة كانت ما كانت ديمونة بنحرث وبنزرع وبنسوي وش حرية بس إيش هالتالي صاروا يهدوا بيوت البادو نحن نمسايين بيشوف بير الحمام ويشوف زي هو يشوف له مكار רק בשנה האחרונה נהרס בו חמש אה, בתים. החמש בתים הם שייכים לצעירים שרוצים להתחתן. המדינה דאגה להרוס להם את הבתים ולהרוס להם את החיים. זה הדבר הכי קשה, זה ממש כמו להרוג את הבן אדם. מגיע לי לחיות. על חלקת אדמה, כמו שאני יכול לחיות. אם אני יושב עם הילדים שלי ככה, בא אליך בן אדם, מסתכל עליך בעין, אומר לך... בכלל מי אתה? אתה אין לך זכות לחיות. מה זה, תהרוס? אתה לא, לא חוקי, אתה. איך אתה מרגיש? אנחנו חיים ביחד פה ואין מקום אחר. העבודה של שתיל 
היא באה ואומרת לאנשים האלו, וואלה, יש לכם זכויות, אתם אזרחים כמו שאר האזרחים. היא נותנת חמצן לאנשים האלה, החמצן של התקווה. האג'נדה שלנו היא להביא להשוואת זכויות של האוכלוסייה הבדואית לשאר תושבי המדינה. איך עושים את זה? בניית כוח קהילתי, בבניית מנהיגות, באלטרנטיבות והצעות לפתרונות לסוגיות שאנחנו מטפלים בהן, ובעיקר זה גם עבודה אל מול מקבלי החלטות כדי שבאמת נביא לשינוי המיוחל. זה הישג עצום. תאר לעצמך שמאבק משותף, אנחנו מצליחים להביא את הממשלה להקים לבדואים 12 יישובים. מה אני יכול להגיד? זה באמת הישג עצום. יש מאבק להביא להכרה נוספת, היום אנחנו עומדים לקראת הנגלה הבאה. אבל גם זה תהליך שצריך ל- ל- להמשיך לקדם אותו. הרצון הוא שהקהילה תקבל החלטות בפני עצמה. לא אנחנו מבחוץ נבוא ו... ולכפות עליה דעות או החלטות. שיבוא ממנה, לא, לא ממקום אחר. רצינו להשיג שתי מטרות. מטרה אחת היא להכיר בכפרים הלא מוכרים, והמטרה השנייה היא לספק לכפרים הלא מוכרים שירותים. שתיל ליפתה אותנו מההתחלה. השיתוף הפעולה הוא הדוק. Organizations today need a whole set of tools in order to become more impactful. They need work plans, they need to know how to raise funds, they need to be more professional in the way they want to impact policy change. That's what Shatil does. Shatil really provides these tools to these organizations. We do political work, political consultancy, we do advocacy both towards the Knesset, the uh, government and local authorities. It's crucial in order to create policy change. עצם זה ששתיל נמצא בשטח, נמצא בקשר ישיר עם המנהיגים האלה, מכיר את הסוגיות, מכיר את האנשים. אנחנו פה יושבים בנגב, זאת אומרת, אני בדואי, אני מכיר את כל מה שמתפתח. כדי לעזור למנהיגים האלה לעשות את העבודה שלהם, הייתי אומר יותר טוב. אני אמל אלנססרה, אני היום מנכ"לית עמותת סדרה הריגת הנגב, אקטיביסטית חברתית פוליטית, וגם פעילה בכל מיני מרחבים שהם מובילים למקום של שינוי חברתי. סדרה עוסקת בעצמת נשים מהמרחב החברתי, קהילתי, חינוכי, פוליטי. אנחנו מתרגמים את כל החזון הזה דרך הפרויקטים שאנחנו מבצעים אותם בכפרים הלא מוכרים. אנחנו כן רוצות לעצם את הנשים מבחינה כלכלית. יש לנו את הפרויקט של ההריגה, שזה מעסיק 57 אנשים. אנחנו מגיעות לאנשים בתוך הבתים. לרוב המשפחות שהן בתוך הכפרים, אין אוכל. מזה נוצר הרעיון של הפרויקט של סדת אלבדיה, שזה גינות קהילתיות והחממה המשפחתית. שתיל... זה, זה, זה הייתה סוג של מעטפה שהיא עזרה להתפתחות של האישיות שלי. להיות אישה משפיעה, אישה שמאמינה בעצמה, אישה שיודעת מה היא רוצה ומה היא צריכה. דרך שתיל זכיתי בהזדמנות להכיר ארגונים, להכיר אנשים משפיעים, להכיר אנשים שהם מקבלי החלטות. זה שיפר את הראייה שלי, המחשבות שלי, וללמוד, ללמוד מה עובר על הנשים הבדואיות שהן חיות בכפרים הלא מוכרים. והפכתי להיות דמות שהיא כן משפיעה. שתיל היא סוג של ארגון שהוא מסייע לכל הארגונים. הם יודעים איך להוביל למקום של השינוי האמיתי. השינוי ש... שבגללו אנחנו הקמנו את העמותה. בגללו אנחנו כן רוצות לשנות את המצב הקיים. אז, אז להם תפקיד, תפקיד מאוד חשוב לארגונים, לאישיות של האנשים שכן מובילים את הארגונים. הם נמצאים בכל מקום. אני גם בא מכפר לא מוכר. רציתי בהתחלה להקים בית ליד אבא שלי, ובאו והרסו אותו. אמרתי, אני צריך לעשות משהו. לא יכול להיות שאנחנו נשב ככה ולהסתכל. באתי לשתיל, מהמקום הזה אני מרגיש שאני תורם מטובת החברה שאני בא ממנה. אני רוצה שהילדים שלי יחיו 
בשלווה, ושיהיה להם מה שמגיע לכל בן אדם בעולם. הזכויות הבסיסיות שיהיה לנו. אללה שכונבי ואולדי שכונבי ואולדי אולדי שכונבי. מה ודיע נענה גוטר מנהל מחל עלה ודאוור ת'אני מחל. אנא ודיע דל שקר ומג'ראי. Shatil works in the Negev with the Bedouin community, but we use the same strategies and the same models to work with other communities in Israel. Together, we can ensure that Israel becomes a more just, shared and democratic society. from Israel, director of Shatil in Israel, and that is Esther Sivan. Esther, congratulations. Thank you so much, Johnny. It's really exciting being here with you this evening. The support of NIF UK has been so meaningful to us in Shatil. You know, and NIF UK is, is a long-term partner uh, and has, um invested in Shatil all along the years um and we feel we feel we have a real partnership and real partners in NIF UK um working together to strengthen Israel's social change community and its human rights community and we know that the human rights award will further enable us to strengthen this partnership and uh, of course uh, enable us to, to make real change on the ground. We are so uh, therefore deeply honored and grateful uh, to receive this award. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Esther Mazalto. Congratulations again. Uh, it's a good moment really to remind you of why we're all here this evening, which is to raise funds for the New Israel Fund. I think that film is very challenging for people who feel uh, bound up with Israel and feel such a close affinity with it. If you love Israel, you see what we saw in that film, those house demolitions, you know that kind of stuff goes on. You either pretend you're not seeing it and turn away from it, or you can do something about it. And the New Israel Fund allows you to be part of the solution. If you give money tonight, you're giving money to dealing with some of the problems that you know are there and that are not always comfortable to look at. Uh, but uh, it's either that or, or helping. So the News Revan allows you to do that. Um, I'm glad to tell you that many, many people are di digging deep and giving generously. Our total has broken through the £200,000 barrier, stands at just over £200,000, £202,000. We've made it through. If we can reach that target, we've talked about of half a million pounds tonight, whatever you were thinking of, if you can give even a little bit more that will be wonderful so you can do the kind of work that we were just hearing about uh, there. Remember the method, the QR code, you scan and it will take you straight away through to our um, uh, to the online donation page. So that will be good. I think now is a moment to mention uh, what we have to offer on our silent auction. Uh, very difficult thing for Jewish people to do a silent auction, as you can imagine. Silence doesn't really work for us, but we're going to have to do it um, that way. Uh, the technology means it. But you can place your bid with one simple click and just get a load of these potential uh, prizes for the winners. Uh, uh, there is uh, on offer uh, a meal for two at Ottolenghi's Rovi restaurant. Or is it something else? Did I mispronounce? Because I was getting the hint of a heckle behind me. I don't know. But um, it's an Ottolenghi, Ottolenghi restaurant. That you will get a print by the award-winning photographer Judah Passell. He is an absolutely brilliant photographer, so that would be fantastic. A luscious hamper from Honey & Co. Weird memory from childhood of thinking hampers were not kosher because of the word ham. That's a very random thought, but it came to me. Or you could get a career coaching package from our friends at Circle Squared. 
several people in this room already getting onto their phones for midlife career panic uh, as they seek a career coaching package from our friends. So all of those uh, prizes are up uh, for grabs in our silent auction slightly later on. For now, though, we do have a treat for you, and it comes in the form of exclusive music uh, recorded by uh, a member of the New Israel Fund's International Council, longtime activist. She calls herself an artivist, uh, using the power of art to advance her message and her ideals of partnership and peace. Uh, she's been a longtime supporter of an advocate for human rights, uh, a leading light in Israel's Arab community. Uh, she is Mira Awad. Hello, dear friends of the New Israel Fund. This is Mira Awad from Tel Aviv here. And I want to congratulate you on this very special occasion. I've written some words because I'm so excited, so I don't want to miss anything. Yet another year passes and we are still meeting online. Alas, I wish I could have seen you all in person, but at least we have these means of communication. And the comforting thought is that I'm guessing we are convening from all parts of the world and that is a fantastic thing. In these awkward times of pandemic, I think I truly learned the concept of gratitude. And therefore, I will start my performance with some words of thanks. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing on all fronts in order to ensure a more just society here in Israel. Thank you for lighting one candle after the other to chase away the vast darkness. Thank you for standing up for democracy, human rights, equality, freedom of speech, and pure common sense. I am here in Papa Studios in Tel Aviv. This is where I practically make uh, all my music, and I'm going to perform an acoustic version of a song that is extremely important to me. The song is called Insan, which means human. And it is the theme song from my latest album that was released just now in September under the title Human. I wrote the song in 2015 after seeing the photo of the lifeless body of Alan Kurdi, a three-year-old Syrian refugee washed to shore after a failed attempt to escape the hell that was and still is happening in Syria. When I saw this photo, my heart simply broke. And I sat down to write a song that is not only about Syria and not only about Alan, but about humans all over the world and how we still let this kind of thing happen. A big thank you to Ayali Shai here in the studio for working the sound and the cameras. And thank you all for listening. With my fervent wishes for peace and solidarity, I hug you all. <laughs> Yeah, 
أخوك الإنسان عم يندهى عليك من تحت أنقاض حياته من وراء جدران مأساته يا إنسان Our thanks to Mira Awad for that song, Look Into My Eyes, I'm Human Just Like You, she sang, which actually could be the NIF's message distilled in a nutshell. Um, very, very poignant and a beautiful song from Mira Awad. We turn to our second award winner, and that is Avi Dabush. I mentioned at the start that we were doing an organization and we've talked about Shatil. And Avi Dabush is a really exceptional individual. Uh, he has been working as an activist for decades and inspiring whole communities to take action, including communities who never thought that anyone would pay them any attention. His commitment is very particularly to the periphery of Israel, both geographic and political. Uh, and this is not just a position that he's adopted. This is really his life. He lives in the communities that he uh, motivates and mobilizes. Uh, and he's been speaking for them and working for them with great results. It's his effectiveness that really sets him apart, I think. I don't want to give away too much because we're going to watch a short film all about Avi Dabush and the work uh, that he does. And we'll meet him on the other side of this film. So take a look at the work of Avi Dabush. I was born in Ashkelon. It's the most uh, southern city on the seashore of Israel, uh, from the periphery, of course. Right-wing family, orthodox, religious. They voted for the Mafdal, the religious uh, party. I was uh, part of Bnei Akiva, and uh, I was actually uh, raised in uh, schools and after that in a yeshiva of national uh, orthodox Jews in Israel. The rabbis that I was in their yeshiva, Rabbi Chaim Druckmann, supporting, of course, uh, occupation and supporting Jewish uh, supremacy. I started to think about uh, those views. The Rabbin Association was maybe the turning point. It was the first time that I really felt more connected to the uh, left-wing political camp in Israel. But I must say that uh, my family was really uh, sensitive to social justice. My, my father grew up in uh, Ashkelon in a very poor neighborhood, and uh, my mother uh, uh, was uh, in Shkunat uh, a very poor neighborhood in Tel Aviv. So they understood what is 
mean to be uh, in poverty. And of course, it's not just uh, living for yourself. So in a way, um, wh when I'm talking about the, the shift that I, that I made, uh, I, I really can't feel that it was a very radical shift because I really felt that I'm taking those values and implementing those values to the reality. I started to study in the university. I met, in a way, by accident, uh, this organization of students for, for the environment, Green Course, it called. I, I really looked for something interesting for me to do in this arena. And uh, when they came with uh, this uh, idea of uh, struggle against the coal power station in uh, Ashkelon, I, I really felt that I can do something. I led this uh, struggle. Every Friday, we came to Ashkelon and we talked with people, telling them about the, this program, the coal power station. I understood that if we, we can make this fire of uh, people, bring the people together to, to shout against it, it, it can, it can uh, make a difference. For me, this campaign of the coal power station was the first time that I came back to Ashkelon and saw, saw it in a, in, a, in a new way. I understood what does it mean to be in the periphery in a deep sense. It's not only about resources, it's not only about money, it's also about um, your idea of power. A lot of people said, how can we inf influence uh, this Jerusalem, this, uh, this government? So for me, it was the first time that I really um, understood very deeply uh, the um, political weakness of the periphery. We went with all the power, and one day we got to 20,000 people who came in two-three buses to Jerusalem. We had one big meeting there, and all the members of the board just got a lot of money from the amount of support that we got. We had to talk about all the 20,000 buses. And in the end, in 2010, הכריעה הממשלה שתחנה פחמית שלישית לא תקום באשקלון. כל פאוור סטיישן, it was kind of a miracle that we can uh, go against this huge project uh, and against the government and uh, we can win. The children uh, of Israel are not born equal. There is a very big gap in terms of education, in terms of economy and for health. We told ourselves that we want to do something that can make an impact. We established this notion of the peripheries uh, movement. Israel has two countries. There is a very developed country, a high-tech country, a great country, and there is a third country. In Israel, the countries are very, very big. And around this question, there is a connection שניסה בעצם להגיד, רגע, בואו נמצא את המקומות המשותפים שלנו, שהם לא מפלגתיים, נאחד את הכוחות שלנו, וזה דבר שאבי אמר לי, והוא נחרט, אנחנו צריכים ללכת ביחד. צריכה להיות פה הליכה משותפת של כל מי שנמצא במרחב שלנו, כדי שאנחנו באמת נוכל לעשות איזשהו שינוי. ותנועת הפריפריות באה ואומרת, בואו, אנחנו פותחים את השערים, אנחנו פותחים את הדלתות. לכולם הגענו לוועדות בכנסת, השמענו את קולנו בצורה מאוד נחרצת בהרבה נושאים, בתחום של בריאות, בתחום של חינוך. הרצון היה באמת להכניס את השיח למיינסטרים, שאנשים יבינו על מה מדברים, שיבינו את המשמעות לחיים היומיומיים של אנשים שלא חיים בתוך בועת מרכז הארץ, ולעשות דרך זה את השינוי. In 2016 we started the movement, and we decided to make this focus on health issues and educational issues. It was in Yerucham, actually, the, the meeting, and we asked uh, Michael Beaton to, to come and talk with us uh, in, at the end of the meeting, As, and we told him, we just decided that the, our campaign will be educational. And he said, okay, I just decided or thought about this uh, idea of uh, making this uh, campaign in education. So, of course, we decided to do it together. Avi and other people, including people of Yerucham, the peripheries, and we actually gave this fight together. We said, let's do a peace of mind. And we came to the peace of mind in Israel. It was the day of the peace of mind. Every night we were in the peace of mind. 
והסברנו למה יש אי שוויון בישראל. הרעיון היה לייצר תודעה בכל המדינה, שבעצם יש מצב של אי שוויון, ובסוף לתבוע מהמדינה שתיכנס לנושא של תקצוב דיפרנציאלי בחינוך, ותתחיל לתקצב יישובים שהם לא עשירים בעושר מוניציפלי, ותיתן הזדמנות טובה יותר לכל ילד. עשו תקציב דיפרנציאלי בחינוך, והוקצו מאות מיליונים חדשים לחינוך. ואני ממשיך בכנסת. It was really uh, unique because it uh, connected a lot of communities and in, in a way that was our dream. We have to go together uh, in order to achieve something deep. I moved to Borchheil in uh, 2008 before the, the war. עופרת יצוקה. ב-2012, again a war, in 2014, protective edge. It was really hard for so many families here, and of course, so many families in Gaza. In, in a way, this is our destiny, unless we will do something. Started to uh, talk, with, talk with people and said, we have to, uh, to make this uh, movement to establish a voice that uh, calls for diplomatic solution. because we understood that uh, no one will help us. And it was really interesting that a lot of people from the world, even people really rooted in the, the right-wing parties, were really open to that and supported and joined this movement. Aza is always a good one. She is always here, first of all, physically. We are going to the streets, we are going to see them, beyond the border. And over the 20 years, in the intensity of the change, זה אומר שיש כאן סבבים של לחימה, לפעמים מאוד כבדה וקשה, זה חלק מאיתנו. המציאות המתגלגלת הזאת, שאף אחד לא עושה שום דבר כדי לשנות אותה, היא בלתי נסבלת והיא לא יכולה להימשך. אני חושבת שהקריאה של התנועה קודם כל הייתה, חייב להיות ברמה הלאומית מהלך אסטרטגי לשינוי המציאות מול עזה. זו תנועה שצמחה, היא פשוט צמחה כתנועת מחאה אזרחית, מקומית, אזורית. היה לנו מאהל מחאה מול בית ראש הממשלה בירושלים, הגענו לתקשורת, נפגשנו עם המון פוליטיקאים והמון מקבלי החלטות. לנו לא יכול להיות טוב אם בצד השני לא יהיה טוב. וזה חלק ממה שהתנועה לעתיד הנגב ביקשה להנכיח או להביא לתוך השיח, והיום זה כבר מדובר. גם על ידי ראשי מועצות פה באזור וכל המנהיגות האזורית. אבי היה מאוד מאוד משמעותי ומרכזי מהרגע הראשון, הוא באמת מנהיג, עומד ומדבר, אז אנשים, אנשים מקשיבים ואנשים הולכים אחריו. היה משהו, איזשהו מין נקודת עוגן כזאת, שסביבה כל הדבר הזה היה יכול להיווצר ולהתארגן. Good politics is about finding solutions with people that don't think like you. I really believe that uh, in a deep way you can change your reality only with conversation in order to find solutions. There was this offer to come and uh, walk with the rabbis for human rights. I really believed in, in this mission of uh, connecting Judaism with human rights for the people who really need it. There is a saying in the Torah, Lo italem. you can't ignore. So this is what we want to do with the Palestinians, with asylum seekers and with the people who live in poverty. For me, it's a way to be more human uh, and in a way, in a religious way to be uh, more connected with uh, my image of God. We've come to say, that's our organization's message if you like, there is a version of Judaism and an understanding of Jewish values which is not about restricting the rights of one's neighbor and making their lives impossible, but actually is about opening up possibilities for partnership and for everybody to flourish. Another thing we do is in the area of the ever-increasing poverty gap within Israeli society and other questions of elementary rights, trying to raise a Jewish rabbinic voice on these crucial questions. Avi has already managed to have a transformational impact on our organization. He has broadened in a significant way the scope, the range of our uh, activities and given us the possibility to dream about even more significant uh, inroads into Israeli society. He always knows where to go. And the ability of Avi 
להתעלות מעל הסיפור המפלגתי, או מעל ההשתייכות המפלגתית, ולראות אנשים לחבר בצורה מאוד אמיתית, זה נדיר. מאוד. הוא מסוגל לבנות דיאלוג והסכמות ואת הערך של חיים משותפים. לאבי גם יש אישיות מחברת, משתפת, יוצרת אנרגיות חיוביות. כשיש לך את האישיות הזאת, כל תחום שהוא ייקח ברמה החברתית לסייע, הוא תמיד יצליח. יש לו תפיסה של אי אפשר לעשות שום דבר לבד. זאת אומרת, בן אדם אחד לא יכול לחולל שינוי. In the time that Avi has been in charge of Rabbis for Human Rights, the membership base of our organization has more than quadrupled in size. Avi is a rare combination of somebody with a strong grassroots commitment who is also willing and able to stand at the front and provide direction and leadership. Well, I'm delighted to say that we are joined live from Israel by this year's second recipient of the New Israel Fund's Human Rights Award, Avi Dabush. Congratulations, Avi. Thank you so much, Johnny. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sheikhayanu Vekiyamanu Vegiyanu Lazman Aze. Amen. Thank you all for being part of this very important award. Thank you, our friends and partners at NIF UK, at NIF and at Shatil. For me personally, it is super exciting to get this uh, award with uh, Shatil, which was and still is my, uh, uh, my prof professional home. I used to work for Shatil for more than 10 years. And uh, nowadays in uh, Rabbis for Human Rights, we get uh, so much uh, effective support from NIF and Shatil. So thank you all. I hope we will see each other uh, soon face to face in London or Israel, supporting a better Israel in terms of equality, democracy and justice and supporting a more humanistic Judaism that puts in at the center the dignity of every creature, every human being and its human rights. So thank you again and have a nice evening. Thank you, Avi and Mazal Tov. Um, congratulations to Avi Dabush, winner of our second uh, uh, Human Rights Award tonight. I have to say, all the groups you saw mentioned uh, in that film, uh, the, whether it's campaigning to prevent there being yet another coal-powered uh, uh, power station built in Ashkelon, or group making sure that funding goes to the poorest kids who need it in Israeli schools, uh, those organizations are funded by the New Israel Fund, which means they're funded by the contributions you make tonight. So if you admired the groups doing that work that we saw in that film, yes, led by Avi Dabush um, with his megaphone in his hand, those groups um, get their money from people like you giving tonight. So remember, the QR code is there just beckoning you, enticing you to come over and scan it and make your contribution. Um, in a minute, we're going to hear from our chair of trustees. But before that I thought I should just update you uh, on the fundraising uh, uh, appeal. I was very much looking forward to saying we've broken through the quarter of a million pound barrier, and I was uh, bracing myself for that. I can tell you that we've not only broken through the quarter of a million pound bar barrier, we've not only broken through the 300,000 pound barrier, we have reached 326 thousand pounds, which is a huge sum of money, but it isn't yet all the way there in terms of reaching that target. We're not all the way there yet. We need you to dig even deeper if you can or make a contribution. If so far you've been watching and waiting, thinking, no, I'll just see what these films are like before I decide, um, see what they come up with. Uh, this time, uh, it would really be good if you sort of were moved by any of those causes there, whether it's about finding a diplomatic solution for those communities, Sherot and elsewhere on the border with Gaza, or the rabbis for human rights, making sure there is a Jewish religious voice uh, in the conversation about equality and fairness in Israel. If any of those things move you, then there's a way very directly, rather than just sitting there sort of angsting as you read stories in the papers that make you want to put your head in your hands about the way Israel's going, you can make a difference by uh, contributing to the New Israel Fund, who will in turn 
fund the kind of groups we just saw. So um, it's a very effective uh, mechanism, uh, QR code, give the money, those groups uh, can be stronger in their fight for a fairer Israel. So I'm delighted to welcome Nolene Cohen, who is the new Israel Fund's uh, incoming chair of trustees or the new chair of trustees. It's changed all over prime minister's office, CEO's office, and in the chair of trustees office. It's all changed. Uh, she's obviously been a very long time supporter of the new Israel Fund and of uh, progressive causes in Britain and in Israel. So a word from Nolene. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm delighted that so many people are joining us tonight, in person and online, for this year's Human Rights Awards. I came to know and understand the incredible work of the New Israel Fund through my involvement with this event, the Human Rights Award Dinner. Being on the committee in the early years of these awards, I could not help but be inspired seeing the extraordinary work that was being done to fight injustices and effect real change in Israel. Having recently taken on the role of Chair of NIF UK, I'm lucky to work with an outstanding trustee board and professional team, and with you, our supporters, to continue to press for change and raise the funds needed to support our grantees to make it happen. 25 years ago, strong foundations were laid when the new Israel Fund was started in the UK. Over the years, we've contributed to the work of hundreds of passionate, committed grantees, and we've reaffirmed what it means to be an unequivocal voice for equality and democracy in Israel. Our own engagement with Israel is fraught with emotional and intellectual tension. One day filled with hope and the next with despair and desperation, compounded by a global pandemic, health inequality and a wave of internal strife in Israel in May this year. The truth is, it's this struggle that brings about the change. Politically, our hopes have been raised. We have a new coalition government, cooperation from both sides of the political spectrum, and Arab MKs in key positions in the government, opening up new possibilities for dialogue and shared interest. May 2021 was a time of deep concern, as violence between fellow citizens spilled out onto the streets of Israel's mixed cities. It was a new moment of crisis. In this moment, NIF did not lose hope. NIF is made for tough times. We mobilized and reached out to our grantees who do the work that they do because they believe that shared society is still possible. NIF responded by launching an emergency global campaign to help ease these tensions, to literally bridge the divide and to fund projects in the field of Arab Jewish leadership and cooperation. This community, our community, responded with unstinting and generous support, raising over £150,000 in the UK alone. The money raised will help to support 21 outstanding initiatives selected from over 600 applications from every sector of Israeli society. NGOs, municipalities, activists and grassroots organisations, hospitals, museums and youth movements all made applications. The difference that you made in that moment was felt deeply and widely. Thank you for your support. One of the key themes that we heard at this time was partnership and trust built up over many years. This meant that our networks of Arab and Jewish organizations were able to respond quickly and effectively, mobilizing people to stand together and to demonstrate that Jews and Arabs refuse to be enemies. Now we're looking at the next stage, a long-term strategy that builds on these partnerships, helping to bring about real change and to show that shared society is possible and that investing in it is necessary for Israel's future. Tonight, I'm asking for your investment in this future. We need your help to support us to continue to support organizations and individuals working for a more socially cohesive society, combating inequality, opening mobile health clinics and providing legal support for people living in the occupied territories. I'm asking you to support people like Avi and Suleiman and Amal, who you've just seen in our films. People with passion who share our values and work in partnership with us to build a better and more equitable Israel for future generations. 
NIF could not do the incredible work that we do without your support. Please give generously, and if you can, please give a bit more. As I mentioned earlier, it is the New Israel Fund's 25th anniversary in the UK. Increasing your donation by 25% will make a difference, building on the investment that we've made together over these last 25 years. Thank you for your generosity and your support. You'll see a QR code on your screen. Please scan the code using your mobile phone and make your donation now. Thank you for joining us tonight. So you heard what Nolene said there. Please give generously and then if you can give a little bit more. I hope you weren't mesmerized by the Tony Blair autobiography on the shelf, which I kept on looking at for some reason, but instead you were looking at the QR code. That's what you want to be focusing on because that is how you will be able to make your donation tonight. And if you use that, it does take you straight away to the News of Fund platform where you can see these very uh, hot ticket items that are going. I mean, they're not gone yet, but the auction is majorly underway. Uh, and I'm told people are bidding pretty furiously for the career coaching package. People, as I said, who are having those thoughts about whether they're in the right job. Now is the time. Again, you see this lot, they are frantically on their phones trying to get that advice. Uh, I would really do that if I were you, but also big demand for the print by the award-winning photographer Judah Passau. Uh, we have books of his photographs here. They are really terrific and you would uh, love to have that on your wall. Honey & Co is a complete favorite for the New Israel Fund demographic, I'm guessing, but I think I'm on pretty safe ground with that bet. Same is true for Ottolenghi's uh, Rovi or Rovi restaurant. So all of those items are there um, uh, uh, and there for you to put in your bid and go high. Why not guarantee that you're going to get it? Um, and, uh, and by bidding high, whatever you think is the right number, go high. And then you have an even better chance of getting it. I can tell you that people are going high in their bids and we have broken through the, or not bids, in their donations. And we have broken through the 400,000 pound barrier. We're at 418,000 pounds, thanks to all of you and your very generous donations. So thank you for those but please do keep them coming because we need to reach that magic 500,000 pound figure if we can, because uh, that will be uh, terrific. So uh, the, the auction is going, there is, uh, time is running out there for our evening together in this online form. If you're with friends, you will have the whole evening ahead of you to eat. I know it's a bit like Seder night, we keep on going on again already with the discussion you wanna get on with the eating. I know that feeling, but there are only minutes to go uh, and use those minutes to use your QR code and give uh, all you can. We're all adding up all those figures uh, as the time goes on, but it's all about making Israel a fairer, more democratic, more just, and more equal uh, place. So as that is going on, it is almost time to um, close out our Human Rights Awards for this evening. But before we do, I did want to take the opportunity on behalf of the New Israel Fund uh, in the UK to do a couple of very special thank yous. It's very much on their behalf because uh, it's really the people who work most closely uh, with the New Israel Fund. And that is, first of all, to Adam Ognall, who you heard mentioned in David Davidi Brown's message earlier, uh, uh, David's predecessor, Adam Ognall, who served as the chief executive for NIF UK uh, for 10 years, uh, and yet somehow emerged, emerges in one piece. Uh, and also to Clive Sheldon uh, QC, uh, who has uh, ended a long stint as chair of trustees for six years. Between them, they really did uh, steer the New Israel Fund to new heights. And Clive always brought that very steady and, um, and sort of understated, but calm steel uh, to the job. So, um, a big, big thank you, I think, the New Israel Fund sends to Adam Ognall and to Clive Sheldon, both of whom have brought the New Israel Fund to its dizzy heights as we cruise towards or rush towards that half a million pound figure that we want you to get uh, to um, tonight in this big moment. So uh, we're going to close for the evening with something rather lovely. Uh, it was a big highlight of our gathering last year. You'll remember uh, this 
a contribution from longtime supporter of the New Israel Fund and all round Israeli music legend, Achi Noam Nini, or Noah, uh, as she's known internationally. She recorded this beautiful song, especially for our New Israel Fund gathering last year. I remember we were all uh, watching it sort of alone, just looking at screens uh, in really the height of, uh, uh, of that second lockdown um, last year. Uh, things are looking up a bit now, but uh, a song of peace and of hope from Achi Noam Nini. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us tonight. Remember, the giving goes on all evening. You can do it using that QR code. The platform will be there. Let's see if we can break through the half million pound barrier uh, tonight. I'm very hopeful we will. In the meantime, I hope to see all of you next year, maybe even in person. I certainly hope so. And we'll close out with this song from Noah. Uh, but before we do that, good night. And maybe we'll have a raise of glasses from the gang behind me as we all say Lachaim and good night. There they are. They're doing it finally. Uh, they're a bit of audience participation, I think. Um, good evening from all of us. And taking it away for the evening is Achi Noam Nini. Yeah.